Hey guys, so I wanted to make an updated guide for my lightning arrow slash ultra hit of the spectrum did I build the same build from last league. So if you're wondering what's different about this build compared to last league and this league, well, it just has less damage. The build is nerfed. Um, not, nothing really else to say. It's the exact same build from last league, but it is nerfed. So what is nerfed about did I? I lost 30% more damage on far shot and it lost 4% a tailwind here so it used to be 20 percent with of tailwind with maximum stacks now it's only 16 percent tailwind so it is quite a big nerve so, you know roughly around 30 you know five thirty six percent dps you lost at maximum effectiveness of far shot but the build is obviously still very very good very strong some of these enchantments from the new patch are pretty insane like return proc for free on bows or 100 percent increase la damage that's local to your weapon so it doubles your weapon dps will definitely more than make up for the nerfs that Dead Eye has received. So it should be no issue once you're in that end game. It's just in the first like 12 hours, 20 hours of your play time, you might feel a little bit weaker because of these nerfs. But yeah, once you get those new weapon enchantments, you'll feel even stronger than what you felt in Acropolis League. So let me just show some gameplay real quick. This is a simple Legion Dunes map. Um, nothing like special gear here. Uh, this helmet's really bad. I just like kind of threw around whatever just to try to get like a proper showcase in Necropolis League because yeah, just kind of whatever rares life resist. Um, bow doesn't even have crit chance. So yeah. So like I said, exact same bow last league. If you really want to know more about this build, um, I would say watch my video from last league. I'm just updating this POB and everything for this league. Now, I'm personally not leak sorting this build, but yeah, it's still very, very strong. You're gonna have no issues doing day one Legion, day two, whatever. It's very good for Mirror Farming as well. Expedition is another option as well. You can pretty much kind of do whatever tier 16, tier 16 map and strat you want. I did change some stuff though, so I actually use a tornado shot now instead of the blast rain storm rain setup. This is just way better for doing Legion clears as your Tornado Shot is just hitting a lot of monsters. So yeah, Tornado Shot on Mana Forge Arrows and Ellie hit a self-cast. Yeah, this is, you know, pretty much the whole gameplay, right? I'll clear this one Legion, then we'll go outside the map to explain the build. I can guess I can clear the boss as well. Yeah, I'll just get this Legion just so we can go to the boss, just to make the video a little bit shorter. It boss damage, no issue whatsoever. So yeah, the other nerf I also forgot to mention real quick is that we are losing Rage and Berserk, which Berserk is the biggest uh, really loss here because that gave you a lot of damage reduction and a lot of movement speed. The damage was also very, very nice, but the movement speed and damage reduction was definitely the biggest reason why I used Berserk, and losing that is going to hurt, especially when your Talonwind is not going to be as strong next patch as well. So you are just going to feel slower. Another thing on the rage, we are not sure if this one rage on here with attacks is staying in the next patch. If this does stay in the next patch, then you should 100% use it. But I did not put on my POBs because every source of rage on hit is now melee only. And yeah, this might be melee only as well. So yeah, let's get to the POBs real quick. Now I'll go over the basics, I guess. So I have this full leveling guide here. Do look at the notes. Um, this is everything you need for leveling. It tells you what gems to get at what levels, a bandit you want to help, all that. And I have all the trees. So make sure you use the trees down here. 21, 30, 50, 55, your light and arrow swap. Personally, I like leveling with frame of arrows. You can level with land arrow. The only difference is if you want to level land arrow, that you have to use LMP. So that is it. I just prefer random arrows as it's always felt a little bit smoother, but feel free to do whatever you want. So yeah, just follow this tree and it's absolutely smooth. Both level one is still just as good as before. The nerfs really didn't affect the level one at all. It feels very fast and pretty fun overall. Now I have the leak start version. So I have the three main POBs to level in, which is only for level in. Then you switch to this POB when you essentially you read to maps. So this POB also has multiple sections here. Make sure you match them together. So starter with starter with starter on tree. Very important to match these. So yeah, this is like straight up like day one gear, day one everything. Um, 
This build is pretty good, 90 L DPS, but it's just showing what you want. You just want triple Ellie with crit crafted. If you can get attack speed, that is great, but you want crit over attack speed. Basic quiver, quiver, once again, it's just mostly showing the stats you want. So you want any flat Ellie damage, crit multi, max life, damage of both skills, and attack speed. If you can't get like life, if you can't get flat Ellie damage, it's fine. Try to get like four out of five of these stats. Rat's Nest, I'm a big fan of Rat's Nest Day 1 before you have Elders Implicits. It gives a lot of crit, it helps with the crit transition. And if you are wondering, hey, when should I swap the crit? Personally, I like swapping the crit when I get a High Reach Truth and a Rat's Nest. And then you click on all your crit nodes, so King of the Hill, Heart Seeker, and Lethality. This is usually around somewhere between 75 and 80 before you enter red maps. And yeah, that's all you need to go crit. High Reach Truth pretty much solves all your accuracy issues. Uh, combined with the high level position and rat's nest your crit is completely fine usually highest truth can be somewhere around 10 to 20 chaos day one and like 5c like day three while rat's nest is always one chaos so yeah i highly like rat's nest because it's so cheap and it's pretty nice day one but you can use other helms you can use the photos you can use gold you can use even the outside you can use a regular rare helmet use whatever you want the rest of the gear is just standard rares right suppress whatever um, life resist life resist um if you are struggling on resist then you can just take off the rat's nest and just get a triple resist helm not a big deal here and also if you're helping the leader that also helps resist quite a bit as you see in this pob i am quite over resist cap 38 over fire and 75 more light turn resist you don't have to follow resist one to one here i'm just you know, putting in example gear um, inertia is also an option here i just have inertia if you don't really want to worry about strengthening your gear because this does immediately gets replaced with the lethal pride. So lethal pride is you can usually just buy one for like one divine, get one DD, solves all your strength issues and also gets you a little bit of damage. So yeah, inertia is just optional. It's just there if you don't want to deal with strength on gear. If you don't have inertia, then you just need to get some strength on gear. No big deal. So yeah. And then mid setup, this is something you can expect to have, you know, depending on how much you play, I would say maybe like 20 hours to 28 hours into your character slash played. Um, you know, better bow, and then you want crit and attack speed, Iris Ire, which I have a feeling will be more cheap this league because there are gonna be less people starting bows. So if less people start on bows, well then this chest will be cheaper. Visco Leash, um, Visco Leash is not a point anymore, of course, but it still gives Rampage, so it's still very, very strong. You can also use Shadows and Dust Glove instead. Both are fine options. Use whichever one you want. And Inspired Learning. Keep in mind, Inspired Learning is only really for if you're doing Legion. If you're not doing Legion, I wouldn't really use Inspired Learning. In which case, you just kind of take out these nodes. Uh, you take out these nodes as well. And you keep this. And then you just put another rare jewel here. And you take these accuracy nodes instead as they are better. So yeah, that's it. If you don't want to use Inspired or if you're not doing Legion, you know, it's pretty easy just to spec out of it real quick. And then, of course, the last setup, high end. This has all the cluster jewels essentially. Um, I would say this is when your character is finished, like your average player, blast and tier 16s. Um, both characters aren't really an early tier 17 farmer, so I would say just be cautious with that. Don't play a bow character if you really want to do like a day two, day three tier 17s, as both characters will still struggle with that compared to other characters. Unless the nerf to tier 17s was quite massive, then maybe it's not a big deal. But yeah, for tier 16, this character is absolutely less any type of content you want to do. Delirium Mirror, Legion, Expedition, whatever, right? It's very, very fast and pretty high damage. The downside of Deadeye is always the defense, and there's not much you can do about that until way higher investment. Which is usually why I struggle in tier 17s, as you can die quite easily. So yeah, that's about it for this. I do recommend Alone Hit the Spectrum. This gem is just way more damage than Land Arrow. It feels a lot better, especially when you're worse gear. Once you have really, really good gear, then sure, you can swap to Land Arrow. The difference between these two skills is the fact that Land Arrow has a lot more area of effect. So it has at roughly 30% more AoE. So for clearing, it can feel better, but Elta Hit has like 50% more damage, even higher at worse gear. So I definitely use this. But do keep in mind, I would not form a lab for this gem because Light Arrow works perfectly fine for all of the map progression. Just go on trade and buy this when you can. It's not worth farming Merc Lab to get this as Light Arrow is completely playable. So yeah, also, 
Uh, you can swap to Mana Forge Arrows as soon as you start doing Legion. This is when I swap to Mana Forge Arrows. So I like using the Artillery Ballista for all the Alice progression, for a Quest Eater, Quest Exarch, Maven, right? And then when I start doing Legion, when I start doing Mapma Strategies, that is personally when I swap to the Storm Rain Blast Rain setup. And it's really, really nice. And later on, you can also swap to the Tornado Shot Tornado setup, which is the last thing I'll show here. So the Ellie hit endgame setup, which also has a hit enter swap if you want to push it that far. I did include it here just to make sure to match it with everything else. So this setup has pretty much everything. It has your Lisa Pride, your clusters, good gear, all that. The Bettos is optional. I just like it because of the speed, and I feel like you might want some speed with the lack of moving speed of uh, Tail and be a nerf. So yeah, Death Rush, you can use Death Rush or the new Tame in here. Both are fine. Death Rush is a little bit more defensive with the life on kill and the adrenaline giving you damage reduction. Taman is more consistent damage, but also you lose the damage reduction. Other nice thing about Taman, um, this ring right here, of course, is that it also gives a lot of resists, so it makes your gear a lot easier. So yeah, you can use the Taman or the Death Rush. Either is up to you. So yeah, this setup, like I said, I'm doing this new Tornado Shot Mana Forge Arrows from Archer setup. Uh, it feels really good for Legion because of the coverage. Mar Archer is really nice on Mana Forge Arrows, and then you can use a full six link on your Elemental Hit for a lot more damage. So I really like this, and you also have a Cast on Crypt Tornado. So how this setup works with this plus one chain is that you're hitting the Tornado and the Balls at the same time, so you're getting kind of a mini shotgun effect because Elemental Hit has that AOE on it. So if the Tornado is directly on the Balls, and a one hour hits the Balls, and one hour hits the Tornado, you're essentially doing twice the damage to the Balls. Same is true for Tornado Shot as well. Yeah, this setup feels very, very good for Legion. Highly recommend it. Uh, Storm Rain and Blast Rain is more so for a single target focus setup, while this is more so for a clear setup, although it does do very well in single target as well. Also, we did lose some defense as we lost the Endurant Cry stuff. Endurant Cry with Call of Arms is no longer a thing, so we had to drop that, unfortunately, which is you know, we lose Endurance Charges and we lost the Life Regen in the Fizz DR. And it's not auto exertion and auto exertion does not work the same as call to arms so yeah unfortunately we did lose some defense there so yeah, that's pretty much about it if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment below i did also make a warden version and the warden version is a lot more damage but the only reason why i don't really rec recommend it early on is that warden does not get plus two arrows has no tailwind so it might feel a bit slow compared to Deadeye and not having plus two arrows might feel a bit rough with all the spectrum. But the base value, you're only, you're only going to be at three arrows. And three arrows, LA hits not going to feel good. And if you have to use something like GMP, well then you're just going to be less damaged than a uh, Deadeye. So what was the point of going to one, right? So yeah, you can do this. I will link it down below. Just keep in mind, experimental, might not feel that good. And if anything, you can always respect Deadeye, right? So yeah, that's about it. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. I'm personally not starting a uh, bow build this league. I am starting landing strike, but I did want to update this build for people that you know love to play bows. Still the same from last week, pretty much just nerfed until you get a bow enchantment. Then it's probably more so the same or even buffed in damage. But yeah, that's it.